Episode 2, representing information. All right, well, everything in a computer boils down to being represented in binary. That is the language of computers. Everything boils down to binary. And so that is on, off. If the current is on, it is a 1. If the current is off, it is a 0. So the question is, how do we encode a lot of different things in just 1s and zeros? We have to encode it through some method, and how we encode it, what method we choose to encode it in, in fact, it's a lot of things. So complexity, how hard it is to code, decode, efficiency, reliability, security, all of these things are influenced by how we choose to encode something in binary. One category of encoding is fixed length encoding. All symbols are encoded with the same number of bits, and we choose this when all symbols are equally likely to be used. And we used a different kind of encoding, which is variable length encoding, when some symbols are more likely to appear than others. All right, so we're going to talk about using fixed length encoding. Uh, and in fixed length encoding, each symbol you want to represent has a unique binary code. And to code X number of symbols, you need a log base to X bits to encode that many symbols. So for two symbols, you need one bit. For four symbols, you need two bits. And for five symbols, you need three bits. However, not all of the codes will be used in this case. Some of them will, and some of them will not, because you do not need uh, that many codes to code five symbols. Some common encodings include ASCII, which is 7-bit, Unicode, which comes in 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64-bit flavors. Now, those are about encoding characters. How do we encode integers into binary? Well, it turns out that we code through powers of 2, and I definitely need an example on this. So, here we go. Here is a binary number. It's just 1. And what that 1 there represents, the 1 represents 1 times 2 to the power of 0, which equals 1, and that's, that's the answer. It's 1. Uh, that whole binary number encodes to 1. All of the zeros after that don't actually add anything to the value, so they simply represent 0 times 2 to the 1, 0 times 2 to the 2, 0 times 2 to the 3, and so on and so forth. So this binary number 101 equals 5, because 1 times 2 to the 2 plus 1 times 2 to the 0 equals 4 plus 1 equals 5. Now that was in base 2. Um, there are also base 8 and base 16 numbers that are used here in computer science. Each base has their own uh, codes that represent the numbers. So base 16 goes all the way up to 16. Here's the code list uh, for that. And so for an example here, this binary number is translated through this code list to be the hexadecimal number 7D0. And here is the representation of how that adds up, how that comes to be. And so you add these things together and you get the result, which is 2000 in base 10. Now to code in whether a number is negative or not, you may have to sign extend the binary number uh, by using the most significant bet or the leftmost bit to code in whether it is positive or negative, with a 1 meaning that the number is negative, and with a 0 meaning that the number is positive. Another way to get a negative number is by two's complement, where you assume that the leftmost bit is negative, and then you subtract the leftmost bit away from all the other ones. And so here's an example. You assume that 7 is a negative, and so you do negative 7 times 16 to the squared, uh, plus 13 times 16 to the power of 1, plus 0 times 16 to the power of 0, and that way you can get a negative number. Alrighty, moving on to addition and subtraction. We're going to start off with addition, because as we shall soon see, addition and subtraction are basically the same thing. Uh, here's an example problem. So, 
1 plus 1, if you ever get 1 plus 1, you'll carry the 1 and drop a 0 down. If you get 1 plus 0, you'll drop the 1 down and there will be no carry. And you just keep on doing that and doing that until you get the answer. And so this problem represented 21 plus 21, which equals 42, and that is correct. All right, moving on to subtraction. Subtraction is basically adding a negative number to a positive number. So let's try to do 21 minus 21. First, we have to negate using 2's complement negation. And so how do we do that? Well, here is 21. And so to negate it, we have to, first of all, invert the numbers. So all the 1's turn to zeros, and all the zeros turn to 1's. And the next thing we have to do is we have to add 1 to the rightmost bit. Then we get the result, and we have to add that negation to whatever it is we want to subtract from. So in this case, we're going to uh, add this number to 21. And so here we go. Here's the problem. And if you work through the addition, what's the result? The result is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we got the right answer. 21 minus 21 is indeed 0. If the numbers that we're adding or subtracting have a different number of bits, we basically have to sign extend it, meaning that we stack a bunch of 1s or zeros, depending on whether it's positive or negative, in front of the number. So an example would be 21 extended to 16 bits would just have a crap ton of zeros in front of it. For fractions and decimals, we basically have something that's similar to regular binary. It's called fixed point representation, in which the numbers in front of the decimal point act the same way as they do in normal binary, but the ones that are after the decimal point reduce are raised to the fractions of a power, so um, 2 to the power of 1 half, 2 to the power of 1 fourth, etc., etc. For really big and really small numbers, we have floating point representation, which is basically scientific notation, and it's a two-part representation. One part is an exponent, one part is a fraction. So here we see an example, negative 19 for the exponent and 6.23 for the fraction. And this is how it works, 6.23 times 10 to the negative 19. That's what this representation is. There are two flavors to this. There's single precision and double precision. Double precision simply has more numbers in the fraction. Now to avoid sign extension, you may also use bias notation, which means that you assume that a large value is added to whatever number you have and that that large value will be subtracted away during runtime so that your intended value comes out. So I definitely need an example on this. Um, if you want a value of 8 with a bias of 100, then you need to input 108 and that 100 will be subtracted away when it's running. And if you want a negative 5, with a bias of 100, you need to input 95 to get negative 5, because that 100 will be subtracted away when you're running.